Now let's quickly shift our attention to NTP. NTP stands for Network Time Protocol. And the primary purpose in life of NTP is to synchronize clocks on our network devices. And it uses UDP port 1, 2, 3. Now you may be asking a question, why NTP? Why do we need to use NTP to synchronize our clocks? Keeping time in sync on all network devices is very important. In particular, it's important to be able to look at logs on our devices that represent different events that happened, like an interface going down or device rebooting, things of that nature. We need to be able to do the interpretation and analysis of our logs. And NTP allows us to have an accurate time with appropriate timestamps on our log messages. And that helps us do what's called event correlation, where we get to look at all the different events that happened on our device versus some of the other devices on our network and figure out what actually transpired that caused a certain outage, for example, on our network. Another reason NTP is important is for the use of digital certificates. And if you have ever looked at a digital certificate, there's a very important field embedded within a digital certificate called expiration date. And without an accurate time, network devices may not function properly if you've got digital certificates handed out to your endpoints for security reasons, and it will wreak havoc on your network. So NTP, you must configure NTP to make sure things operate correctly on your network. And another use case for NTP could potentially be that if you have a security incident that happened in your environment where you think you were hacked, when you have synchronized timestamps, you can do what's called forensic analysis and do a hop-by-hop -hop investigation of what actually transpired throughout the chain of events in your network that led to a certain security incident. And you also want to find out what kind of damage did the bad guys cause. And thanks to NTP, when the time is all synchronized across the board, you can see that a hacker came in via a WAN circuit on your router. And then from there, they hopped onto a switch. And then from there, they communicated with a particular server and maybe downloaded certain files or maybe uploaded some type of malware to your server through the NTP and the timestamps, we can do that forensic analysis to see exactly what transpired. And finally, there is a concept within NTP called a stratum level. And stratum level number indicates a believability of the NTP server or the NTP source, I should say. And it also indicates device's proximity to the reference clock. So there are some clocks globally that are used to provide very, very accurate time. And there are NTP servers on the internet that you can utilize to be able to configure your devices that have a very, very low stratum level. And stratum level zero is considered the highest NTP stratum level, which means it's the most believable device. Whereas with the, the device with a stratum level of 15 means that's the lowest NTP stratum number. And that's the least believable device. When it gets to number 16, it's no longer believable. So something to have you have to keep in mind. Here's a list of different internet time servers on the internet. And this list right here is furnished by NIST, which stands for National Institute of Standards and Technology. And they maintain a list of servers that communicate with different time sources on the internet to be able to provide you with very, very accurate time. And they have both 
IPv4 and IPv6 servers specified on this list. I'll provide a link in the description of this video. And what we're going to do finally is we're going to do NTP configuration on our devices. And the way we're going to do this is let me give you a quick walkthrough of this diagram. So the very first thing that's happening is we have these internet time servers that are being represented by time.nist.gov. Okay. So this is once again, the list that I was showing you. And if you use this URL time.nist.gov, this is a URL to NIST's load balancer, which means there's a bunch of servers right behind this URL. So you get to use their servers in a round robin fashion. Instead of pointing to a specific NIST server, this gives you the ability to be able to point to a whole bunch of servers that NIST maintains and you have the ability to do that in a round robin fashion. So it's good for high availability reasons. Here we have R1. So within our corporation, this is our edge router. We'll make that an NTP master. NTP master is a device that is supposed to have a highest stratum level within your environment. And then R2 in our network will make that an NTP server. Another important aspect that I want to bring to your attention is you see this IP here, loopback 10.0.0.1 slash 32. The reason I have this loopback here on R1 is because all the NTP servers in our environment that would want to learn and synchronize their clock with the NTP master it's ideal to provide loopback interface instead of providing a physical interface because what if I had multiple redundant links? So if this was fast zero below and the one above was fast one, I don't want to tie my configuration to the physical interface. It's better to provide a loopback interface which never goes down regardless of what's happening with the physical paths or, or the physical links on this network our loopback interface will always be up. So this is considered a best practice. Now let's quickly look at some of the steps that we'll be taking to configure our devices. Here's how we'll be configuring our devices. First, we're going to specify the time and the time zone locally. So on R1, we're going to say clock time zone, PDT for Pacific time zone, with daylight savings, negative seven. We're going to then say clock summertime PDT recurring to specify we're currently observing daylight savings time. And finally, we're going to specify the exact time on our device. So we'll say clock set 1300, meaning 1 p.m. 27 June 2021. We'll then do a basic NTP configuration. We'll specify our name server, which in this case is the Cloudflare DNS server on the internet. We'll then, we'll then specify the NTP server, which in our case would be time.nist.gov. We'll then turn our router one into NTP master, and we're going to specify the stratum level. We're going to say our stratum level is two. And finally, on R2, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set up an NTP server 10.0.0.1 one to point to the loop back on R1. And that's pretty much the only thing that we're going to need to do on R2 besides, of course, setting our clock and time zone locally, because it helps to set up a time and time zone locally on all the devices that you want to participate in NTP. This way, they're getting a bit of a head start and they're pretty close to being accurate, but not perfect. But once you do that and you specify the NTP server, your devices then start going to communicating via NTP protocol to start synchronizing itself with the NTP master. With that, let's jump on CLI and get the ball rolling. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, give me a thumbs up, hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.